Hello and welcome back to our Adobe Camera Raw for Beginners lesson. Uh, we've been going through a few different lessons on getting uh, comfortable with the basic adjustments and everything that they do, uh, seeing them in action and all that kind of fun stuff. So this time we're going to dive into a little bit more of the detail of Adobe Camera Raw and some of the other functions that it'll do. In particular, we're going to look at today this button right up here called the Tone Curve and everything that is does, so it'll be exciting. Now, first time you click on the tone curve and you see this picture here, you might be a little bit intimidated by exactly what's going on. Uh, I might feel like you don't want to click on that tab anymore, but uh, those that are familiar with uh, Photoshop and their levels and their curves will probably be very comfortable here. Uh, for those that aren't, um, we'll, we'll kind of dispel some of the mystery behind what exactly is going on and, and show you how you can use this tone curve tab uh, in your post-production to make uh, your pictures better. So as a basic understanding of what the tone curve does, you'll notice right away you'll have sort of this picture here with a graph um, underneath it. And you'll notice right away that this here is the histogram of what is going on up here. So it's really not that uh, confusing. Uh, this is your histogram here. So this is what we're going to be doing is when we edit here in the tone curve, we're actually going to be editing our histogram. So that makes sense. Now, the tone curve is actually broken down into two different areas. Um, I guess I shouldn't say different, but they, um, they're different forms of, uh, of working with tones. The, the parametric and the point tone curve. The parametric is, think of it as kind of the beginner's tone curve. Um, it'll let you do your editing, but it won't, um, it'll kind of work within certain constraints. So it's not going to let you do quite as much as you do when you're in the point curve. However, having said that though, um, the parametric is a lot easier to use. Um, but sooner or later, you're going to want to dive into the point curve uh, area as well. So let's get an example of exactly what's going on. I brought up here our little, uh, our little gray um, area here, our grayscale uh, that we've used in previous lessons. Let me go back to actually zoom in there a little bit more. And so we can see a little bit better. Sure, good enough. So we're going to see what happens when we start clicking. So down here on the parametric area, we have highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. So it kind of makes sense exactly uh, what this is doing here. When we adjust our sliders here, we're going to see that we're adding more into the highlights. So up here in the, the curve here, we see what's happening. It's taking our highlights and it's, it's pulling them up or pulling them out. Uh, so we're making them brighter. And if we look here actually on the grayscale, we see that happening. Our highlights are getting stronger. If we pull that down, our highlights become less so that there's no highlights. And again, we see on the parametric curve level here, it's uh, it's going down. So double clicking that will send that back to a default. Now our lights is going to be our area between our highlights and our darks. So that's going to kind of sort of stretch things down a little bit further down on our line here. And so we see our lights either are growing darker or our lights are becoming stronger. And uh, thus far as also with our darks, it kind of the area between our shadows and our lights that'll bring up or bring down depending. And our shadows are our darkest uh, tones here. They're gonna darken a lot as we can see the, the really a lot of blacks here developing. And if we pump it up, then we're gonna see less blacks and more of our midtones are starting to get highlighted. And again, on our curve here, we have kind of the bow effect being pulled out there. So this is basically the parametric curve and it's also the point curve, but it's it's the point curve within certain constraints that's happening. So these buttons here on the bottom is also uh, good to know. This kind of constrains our area of where we want to work on. So if you want to make our highlights, but we just want to concentrate really on the top part of our highlights, we can move this over and move this tighter. So we're really we're having a really tight little area that we're working on here. Same as applied if we work on our shadows and we want to make it to constrain it to just say our middle points there, we can do that and it's just going to do work in these particular areas once we shorten this line here a little bit and now we can see that most of our area here is being constrained within this little area here. Let's set this back to zero. We double click on all these little triangles. Whoops. There we go. And the same with these ones here. So that gives us an idea. The same is true of our, our, our point uh, tab at the top here. This though, you can do a lot more, uh, a lot more good or a lot more damage depending on, on what you do. And this particular one, instead of having sliders that you choose from, here you choose your own points. So you click to make a point, 
You can make as many or as few as you want. Click to make a point and click to make a point. Now you have areas of constraint that you're going to be working on, but as you can see, you can really, really mess with it. So this will go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom, and uh, and really you can do massive changes to to your picture. So say we were going to do just a gradual S curve, then we could kind of go like that or whatever the case may be, and now we have this is the point curve. So you can do a lot more to it than you can do in just the parametric. There's also a, on the drop down list here a, a few of the more common settings for post production in pictures. We have the linear setting, which is just straight, the default. We have one for medium contrast, so you got a little bit of a curve going in here. Your, your shadows and your darks are a little darker. There's a tiny bit higher here in your highlights. And if you want a strong contrast, same thing, only a little bit higher there. So that gives you an idea. Um, if you just want to quickly run into there and say, I just want a little more strong contrast, just choose that. Uh, a lot of times you'll be using this linear though. So one thing to remember as well um, is if you do make points along the thing here and you want to get rid of them, a couple ways of doing it, you can either click on the point itself and choose delete on your keyboard, or you can actually grab the point and just pull it off the screen and that'll delete uh, the point as well. So now you're back to no points. So the point curve is, is, is fairly good. Again, if you're comfortable with Adobe Photoshop and its curves menus, you'll be comfortable with this. Uh, if you want to just make your points and then you start pulling these around and they're going to just look kind of like, think of it like pulling back the string of a bow. It kind of pulls everything back with it. If you want to constrain it so that it only fits a certain area or you want to start another point there. So now it's going to be constrained between these two ends here. So when I pull it back, it's going to just kind of pull in there. Look, it's also making my highlights change. So what I want to do is maybe I'll add a point there in that spot and I'll pull that back and make another point there and pull that back. That's if I didn't want to mess with any of those points. Just want to keep it constrained to right there. That's what I would choose. So there's our, our point and our parametric curves. So let's see it in action. That's exactly what we come here to do on a couple of different photographs here. Our first photograph is actually supplied to us from one of our photo taught uh, uh, tutorial authors, uh, Valerie Robinson. This is her picture. She's a wonderful photographer and a wonderful author here for photo Tut. So it's uh, nice to get uh, your picture and, uh, and working with your picture here. So let's delete all of these points so that they don't affect what I'm doing here. Pull them off the screen. Go back to the default there. So now we're going to see we have a very nice picture. As is, it's pretty good. Maybe we wouldn't want to do much for it, but we'll see how uh, our tone curves can help improve some of it, or at least, you know, change it a bit. So here we see, it looks like everything's kind of a similar tone. Our histogram here is listed. We got a lot in our in our darks here, not as much in our highlights. So maybe we can uh, mess with that a bit to start. So why don't we pull up our highlights a bit and see what happens, bringing in some more light into there. Let's bring in our lights as well. There we go. And let's make that nice S curve. Let's bring down our darks and our shadows. Uh, let's set it that up. There we go. So now if we look at our before and look at our after, we see already that our eye is more drawn uh, towards the subject of, of the picture here rather than the background in the back. So that's already nice. So we've already improved it. We've already made that subject uh, stand out a little bit better. But usually with any type of adjustment in, in Adobe Camera Raw, we do more than just work in one area. So along with our tones curves, let's go to our basic panel and we can fiddle with that to see if we can improve it as well. Uh, let's see what happens if we bring in a little fill light to bring more into the foreground. That's not too bad. Let's bring up the blacks again with the fill light. A little too much blacks there. Let's bring up our contrast a tad. See what happens here. Okay, that's not too bad. So now we have our before and after. Actually, you can, can hardly tell. At least it'll be difficult to tell with that. So uh, let's maybe increase our vibrancy a bit. I like the greens there in the background and the blues in the shirt. Remember, vibrancy will work on those kind of mid-tone highlights and won't uh, make your skin all orange like saturation will. So um, that'll be nice. So let's see here. Maybe some recovery here. Let's see what happens. We'll do a little more fill light. That'll bring in lots. But kind of like the background to be a little darker so that the uh, subject here stands out. Okay, let's start with that. So let's 
this is our before and our after now if you want to see your before and after with uh, everything that you've done not just the uh, the basic adjustments whenever you're in a in the panel and you use the preview it'll only show you the adjustments you've made in that panel it won't show you overall for that you have to go again to the last button here your presets and now when you do preview before and after now you get exactly all the things that you've done to the picture will be shown as in the before and after stage. So there we go. We've we've uh, kind of darkened the background. We've brought out some more uh, highlights. We've darkened some of the shadows. We made it so that our um, our subject here stands out more. So that's fairly nice. That's using the uh, parametric tone curve. Let's see it from another picture here, also supplied by one of our uh, photo touch visitors and, and their picture. This time we're going to use the point curve because there's there's quite a bit of uh, action going on and uh, it seems like a lot of our midtones are really really high we don't have much for shadows and we don't have much for highlights and here we're going to use a slightly different technique I'll show you a new trick for working on this in this point curve because we don't have hardly anything in the highlights here a really uh, really big gap from our highlights what we're going to do is up here in the corner we're going to take our highlights point and we're going to drag it across to right where the highlights kind of start and what we've done there we've we've condensed it already uh, and we've taken out all this this dead space or this white space as it is so we already have a sort of a nice starting point so if you look at the actual before and after just doing that alone we've already improved the picture quite a bit so what we can do is uh, is work on it from there uh, we can let's see click on here in our highlights and see what happens when we pull those up a bit again that brings in a lot of color but the thing is that we've uh, made a little too light so let's bring in our darks here let's let's give it a lot of darks to work with that's that's more dark than than what I want but like I said we're going to be working also here in the uh, basic adjustments panel to kind of uh, mess with the picture a little bit more so let's see what happens when we bring up our exposure a bit there we are we bring in some of those lighter colors yeah, that's too much I was gonna watch see our histogram here we've gotten uh, at least the sky is completely blown out so we gotta always keep an eye and making sure we're not over adjusting too much we want to bring in maybe some recovery to bring in some of those uh, lost uh, data there in the highlights that we've we've kind of overexposed uh, let's see what happens when we pull in our fill light that's gonna brighten up our foreground here that's looking pretty good our blacks make sure that we add some of those and maybe add some contrast into the picture as well that really makes it shine so let's see our before and our after well wow, that's a lot better maybe some vibrancy I kind of like those turquoisey colors in, in the uh, in the ocean there another thing we want to do is maybe mess with our white balance or we guess we could have started with that uh, from the looks of it the picture it might have been cloudy at least from the from the initial uh, picture we see so if we choose cloudy look at that so now we get a lot more warmer tones in there as a white balance I really like that so uh, the sand really has a yellow feel to it there's our before picture and our oops and our after picture if we want to see everything we did including the adjustments we made uh, to the tone curves again we go to our very last tab there our presets and choose our before and our after outstanding improvements already in that uh, again we can do some further adjustments to that but that gives you an idea of how we can kind of use a, a tone curve here to bring uh, down your some of the highlights or bring up some of the highlights rather and bring down some of those shadows and those darker colors um, as well another nice little feature here is, is kind of an added bonus when you're using the point curve if you're unsure exactly uh, which highlight or where the highlight is you're working with in corresponding to the range uh, here on your curve what you can do is you can uh, hold down the command key or the, you can on the Mac or the control key on the PC and what that does is while you hover over the picture you'll notice up in our curve how it's going up and down and up and down so it tells you exactly what part of that picture you need to uh, to click on if you're going to be doing adjustment there so example if we were going to say let's these highlights here in the lower part of the of the beach here are blown out we cover it over there we click on there that'll establish a point that's exactly in that spot and now we can just adjust just those areas there you know be careful with it so if you wanted to bring them down a tiny bit more than the rest of the picture then we can do that we can we have that point exactly where on the picture that is being affected by by working this particular area so there we go 
not that scary. Tone curves a little bit intimidating maybe at first. Really not that scary. Uh, the parametric is less damaging uh, in your transitions than the uh, the point curve, but you want to get comfortable with dealing with both. So tone curve adjustments uh, in, in a nutshell, it's going to make your post-production even better in Adobe Camera Raw. Thank you.